Welcome at the E2E paint job. Today I'd like to show you how to use and set up such a spray gun and maybe you are a beginner and don't know how to handle such a spray gun or which spray gun to buy or how to set up and I like to give you some pro tips how to set up such a spray gun and maybe which spray gun to buy for a proper finish and for a good job and a good custom painting. So let's start with the first tip. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. First tip, gravity feed gun or bottom feed gun. There are different guns on the market and most of the common spray guns are such gravity feed guns. And that means they have a cup on top filled with color and the gravity forces the color inside the gun. It's mixed with the airflow inside the gun, inside the fluid tip and smashed out of the gun. But there are also bottom feed guns and that means they have the cup underneath the gun and the airflow inside the gun produces a vacuum and this vacuum sucks the color out of the cup. It's mixed also in the fluid tip and smashed out of the gun. So when do you use what? If you want to paint big things like trailers, like boats, like houses, where you need a lot of color, a big amount of color, which is very heavy, you use a bottom feed gun. Because the heavy amount of color underneath the gun is easier to handle than on top of the gun. But when you paint cars, motorbikes or cycles or something like that, you can use such a gravity feed gun. It's also a good idea to use a bottom feed gun if you want to paint the ceiling over your head, because if you use such a gravity feed gun over your head, the color will leak on top of you and that's perfect for Instagram, Facebook and YouTube. So if you need followers, use a gravity feed gun for overhead work. And if you want to go professional, use a bottom feed gun. Okay, first tip. Okay now, from the beginning. Next tip, how much air is needed to run such a spray gun properly? And for a beginner, it's not so easy to find out, but it's not as difficult as it sounds. There are two things you need to know. The first thing is the pressure, measured in PSI or bar. And the second thing is the amount of air running through such a spray gun, measured in liter per minute. And how can you find out how much airflow is needed and how much pressure is needed? You can check such catalogs or you can find them also online. Or if you have a professional gun, you have also a user manual and such data sheets. And in these data sheets, you have such charts and you can find out how much pressure is needed and also how much airflow is needed depending on the fluid tip mounted in the spray gun. But I have also a simple tip for you if you have no data sheet or if you have bought an old gun or if you have no information about your gun. And I like to show you how you can find out if your compressor provides enough air to run your spray gun properly. And to do that, you need such a pressure gauge. You have to mount this pressure gauge underneath your spray gun. You have to open the pressure valve on the spray gun and also on the pressure gauge, full open and then mount the air hose. It's very loud when I mount the air hose. So I explain first what I like to do. I mount the air hose, then I put the trigger full opened as well. I explain later how this can be full opened. So full open the trigger, full open the pressure valve, also on the pressure gauge, and then press the trigger for one minute. And if the pressure doesn't sink, in the pressure gauge, you have a nice airflow and also a nice pressure to run your spray gun properly. Okay, I will do it for 10 seconds. You have to do it for minimum one minute. So it don't sinks. And that means my compressor can provide enough air to run this spray gun. Okay, that was my quick tip for you. So you can find out if your compressor can provide enough air if you don't have any information. Next tip. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay now, from the beginning. The next question is not so easy to explain, but I like to try. And the question is, should I buy a high volume, low pressure gun, HVLP, or should I buy a low volume, low pressure gun, LVLP? And what the fuck does that mean? 
And most of the common guns are high volume, low pressure guns. And they look like that. And that means you have a high volume of air running through the gun with a low pressure combined with a low pressure, which is 1.8 bar or 2 bar, which means, where's my sheet? 29 or 26 PSI. That means high volume, low pressure. My guns are a little bit different. They have a low volume and a low pressure. And that means I have not so much air running through the gun. And this gun needs only 170 liters. It's available also in a high volume and low pressure combination. And then it needs 400 liters of air. And that's a difference. And why do I need such guns or why do I use such guns? Because I do custom painting and when I do custom painting, it's a good decision to use such low volume, low pressure guns because you have not so much atomization on the gun and not so much pressure. I have only two bar and not so much air running out of the gun. So I have a lot of masking and I cannot blow off the masking with this spray gun because I have only a mount of 170 liter running through these guns. Also my smaller guns are low volume, low pressure guns. These need only 60 liters in the biggest fluid tip combination. And I hope you understand what I'm talking about. So it's very simple, high volume, low pressure. All these guns are low pressure guns. So we need only two bar, 1.8 bar. And the difference is the amount of air running through the gun and a high volume gun has amount of air between 400 to 650 liter and a low volume gun has rough about 170 to maximum 200 liter running through the gun. And that's the different difference and I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay now, from the beginning. Next tip, how to set up the spray gun. And that's the most interesting part if you are a beginner. And on most of these common spray guns, you have three knobs. And we like to start with the knob underneath the gun. And that's the pressure control valve, the pressure reducing valve. It's also called cheater valve. And if you are a beginner, never touch this cheater valve. And I like to explain you why. Only some of the spray guns have an in-mounted pressure gauge. My one hasn't, and that's a professional gun. And if you don't have a pressure gauge inside the spray gun, you can't control the amount of air running through the gun and the amount of pressure inside the gun. I am a professional. I do that more than 20 years and I can listen to my gun. My gun talks to me. And if there's something wrong, if it sounds wrong, I can adjust the pressure on the gun because I know how it must sound and what my gun talks to me. And if you don't understand what your gun talks to you, never use this cheetah wolf, okay? But how can you set up the pressure correctly? Use such an extra pressure gauge and you can mount it underneath the gun. And these pressure gauges have also such pressure reducing valves and use this one. And you can exactly set up the pressure with such a pressure gauge. And that's what we like to do now. And I have to talk also about the air supply. You have also such pressure gauges on the compressor or on your air supplies after your filter. And this pressure gauge has a different pressure to the pressure gauge on my spray gun. And that's caused by the loss of pressure inside such an air hose, because as longer the air hose is, as much pressure will be lost. And so you have to set up your pressure with an extra pressure gauge direct underneath your spray gun and never on the pressure gauge on the compressor or on the air supplies, okay? This pressure gauge says five bar, which is 70 PSI, and I need only two bar, which is rough about 29 PSI, and that's what I like to set up. So you need to full open the trigger with this knob. I like to explain that later. So full open the trigger, mount the air hose and then you can set up two bar with full open trigger and that's what I like to do now. Two bar, full open trigger and that's the amount of air needed in my gun. And now you have the correct air setup in your gun. Okay now, from the beginning. Next setup, the fan size. 
And I changed to a smaller gun because I know lots of you like to do custom painting and a lot of you know that I do cycle painting and these small guns are good for cycle painting and for painting smaller things. But it's the same with a bigger gun. And I like to show you with the smaller gun how to set up the fan size and that's the knob on top of the gun, this one. And I've prepared a sheet of paper and I like to use the smaller gun because I'm inside the studio and I'm not in the paint booth. So I can do only small atomization without any face mask and that's a good gun to do so. And what does it mean, the fan size? Now the fan is complete closed and I can do such points. And if I open this trigger, this knob completely, I have to give some more air. That's the use of the cheetah valve. I can do a much, much wider and much bigger fan and that is how the fan size is set up, but it's not correctly as you can see. And I like to show you how to set up this fan correctly. So at first close this trigger completely, this knob, and you can produce such round shapes like these. And it's too much pressure. So I can close the pressure valve, the cheetah valve a little bit. And now I can do perfect points. And when do I need such points? When I like to do such tubes. And when I like to paint the tubes, it's a good idea to do only such a point, a little bit open, not too much. And then I can paint this tube in the correct way without losing too much material to the paper. Now I like to open the trigger complete and you can see how much material is lost on top and on the bottom of the tube and is sprayed on the paper. Can you see this? Here you can see the tube and that is the color lost to the boost, to the spray boost, to the air and that's not perfect. So I have to close this valve and I have to set up the gun to a kind of point. And that's good for painting such tubes. And at next, I like to paint the panel like this. And the setup is to such a point. And I like to paint the complete panel. And that would be horrible because I have only such strokes. And that is not what I want. So I have to open this valve, the fan size. And you have to find out how much. And then you can paint the panel. Like this. And that's perfect for bigger panels for cars or if you have a bigger surface to paint. And that is how you set up the fan. But I said that is not correctly. And what is a correct and an incorrect fan? You can see some areas which are not perfect filled with color. I hope you can see them. And what can we do to do a perfect fan? I will open this completely. And I like to show you the wrong fan. You have some strokes in the middle of the fan, small strokes. I hope you can see them. And that's why the fan is not completely perfect. So you have to close this a little bit, it's too much. 
and then you can do the fan again. Until the stroke is perfect, a perfect oval shape and all areas in the stroke are covered with the same amount of color. And I hope you can see the difference. I try to do another one wrong, so hopefully you can see a wrong stroke as well. The gun is too perfect to do wrong strokes. <laughs> it's a professional gun, so it's hard to do it wrong. But I try to do a wrong stroke. And hopefully you can see that. That is more than a banana. You can see here is more air, or more color, and here is more color, and in the middle is more air. So it has this typical banana shape. And this one is perfect, more perfect. So you have to set up the gun until you have such a perfect stroke and not this banana shape. And I hope you understand what I like to explain. Yeah, and that's very simple. So you can do points or you can do such oval shapes. So the points are for tubes. And the oval shape is for panel or for bigger areas of color. Yeah, and that's as simple as it is. So next step, the trigger mount or how it's called, the trigger valve. That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay now, from the beginning. I have to correct myself. This knob is called fluid tip control. That means you can control the fluid tip inside the spray gun. And let's check what this does. Inside the spray gun is mounted such a spring and the needle. And this needle is controlled by this tip and by the spring. So I have to put in the needle inside the gun, inside the fluid tip. I hope you can see that. And the spring presses the needle into the fluid tip. There is such a ring on the needle, here you can see it. So the spring stops and the spring pushes the needle into the fluid tip and this knob controls the spring. And the first thing you can control is how hard the trigger is to push, how hard you can push this trigger. And the second thing you can control is the travel of the needle. Now it's full opened. I hope you can see it. And now I close this. And I hope you can see that the trigger is traveling to the fluid tip. Hopefully you can see that. And when this is complete closed, you can't push the trigger and also the fluid tip is complete closed. And I like to show you what happened with the smaller gun with some color inside. So I will close this completely. And I can't spray any color. No color can flow through this fluid tip because it's complete closed with the needle. The needle come, is closing this fluid tip inside the spray gun and no color runs through my spray gun. Now I can open that and so you can control the amount of color running through the gun. And that is very nice if you do such points. I like to do such points. I will use a sheet of paper so you can see it as well. Trigger full opened. And that is much too much color. 
I hope you can see that. There's no atomization and it doesn't look very good. And now we can close this a little bit, the fluid tip control, until we can do a perfect point. And that looks much better. And that is what you can do with the fluid tip control. Again, I will open it completely. Much too much color running through the gun. So you can't do any cool custom painting. I close it a little bit. And it looks much better. Yeah, and that's all. And that is how you can set up such a spray gun, okay? That's what I'm talking about. Wait. Okay now, from the beginning. And the last pro tip I like to give you is, it's not the size that matters, it's the setup that matters. And what does that mean? I have two different guns, obviously different. That's a big one, that's a small one. and. These two guns can do exactly the same. It's not the size that matters. It's the setup, the fluid tip, the needle nozzle combination inside the gun and the setup I did with these two guns. So let's check what I mean. Can you see that? And that is possible even with such a big gun. And now let's take the smaller one. And that is what I mean with setup, set up your guns. So why do I use different guns and different sizes of guns? Let's check some of my videos where I did several things in the different years. I did custom painting on YouTube. Let's check how I painted a car. And when I paint such a car, I need a lot of color inside the gun. When I paint panels, when I paint doors, and I need 750 milliliter, the complete amount in the cup to paint such a door or a side of a car. So then it's a good idea to use a big gun. And let's check also some bicycle painting videos where I did bicycle painting. So I need only 150 milliliter or 100 milliliter of color. And then it's a good idea to use a smaller gun. It's much easier to handle. I can paint inside of frames, inside of these difficult tube gate geometries, and that's why I use smaller guns. Both guns can do the same. You can see it here. It's only the setup and the fluid tip used in the spray gun. And that is what I can tell you about spray guns. I hope you like it. I hope you like that video. If you want to know more about custom painting, check also my other videos, check my channel, and for my daily stuff, my Insta and Facebook, as every time, thanks for watching and see you in one of my next videos. Good luck with your spray gun and hopefully you are also able to set up the spray gun right and have fun with a good, good custom painting. Goodbye.